Welcome to the skill session about state machines. State machines are really good if you have some kind of an application. This can be in, in machinery or in software. It can really be in, in a lot of places. But if you have some kind of functionality that reaches a state and is dependent on that state to reach an other state. Um, so let's just dive right into it and explain things as we go along. We already built this sequence diagram to show a professor enrolling a student in a course. Um, let's try working with the same concept, at least in a state machine. So state machine, there we go. Create a new one. We'll call this state machine. And we can have the name of one up here, but that could also be implicit by the model itself. We can have containers with different things. Once again, we don't need to go that deep. Um, what we generally have in a state machine is these boxes that each represent a state, not an activity. So you typically use a rectangle to represent a state. And then you'd have this black arrow right here, or sorry, this black circle to represent where you start. Then you would have a circle with a circle around it to represent where you end. In between, you'll probably you'll generally have multiple different states and you'll go from one state to the other. And then you uh, you might actually have different states. And you might have the option to go to different ones, and they could all point back to that same state. Now, generally, if this happens, you'll need to introduce a choice. And the choice is built as a um, diamond shape. So this one. So this is what you would generally do instead to say, well, you cannot just go from one state and then to do into two different ones. Well, you could technically, but most in most cases, what you really want to do is you want to say, well, after this state, you'll have a choice. Yes or no. Depending on your state, you'll go into one of these other states and either one of those might be capable of getting you to the end state. And not all state machines have an end state. All end, all state machines should have a start sta state. So we know where to begin when we start reading this, when we start going into it. But um, a state machine can show a loop. Some things are built to just run eternally. And then you can just have, have these uh, states coming after each other uh, without ever having an end state. That's, that's fine. But if there is an end state, then it's a mistake not to include it. So um, I would take this line and I'd make it black because that's the way it's supposed to be. Generally, in all of these diagrams that we've gone through, um, we, want, uh, we want it to be uh, monochromatic. So we don't want to, uh, to decide what, what color the arrows is. We're supposed to be able to print this on a, on a non-color laser printer and still be able to get all the same information. So. What we could have here is a um, is a student not enrolled. Okay, so then they um, or oh, well maybe their student applied to school. That's their state, and it's gonna be their state for quite a while. It doesn't have to be that way in order to be in a state machine, but you know when when you apply to get into a school. It's going to take some time before you get an answer. So there's going to be a choice here. Accept it. And the answer to that can be a yes or a no. Um, and then uh, they might be blacklisted. <laughs> they probably aren't. But um, uh, not being enrolled this year. They can try again uh, next year. And then they have this end state that comes right after it. But if they are enrolled, then the next uh, thing that's going to happen is 
they are gonna get um, an offer, uh, offered enrollment. We're gonna send out the, uh, the the letter to ask them then if they want to enroll. You you've got a space here. Do you want to use it? Let me just remove all this stuff up here. This is a, a bad example that they've used. And are they then going to accept that offer? It's not going to end right here. Um, you could say that that they might just not answer and then it ends there. But I would argue that not answering is just one way of replying no. So let's, uh, let's do it like this and say that, that um, well, actually, accept it. Yes, accepted uh, by applicant, because right now we're calling things a bit too much of the same. This is accepted by school. If yes, then that's what happens. But if no, then they're not being enrolled this year. And they'll still go to that end state. So they're offered the enrollment and they uh, say yes, uh, they will then be enrolled into the thing. Enrolled into uh, the courses and they'll be offered some, um, some courses and those courses will then um, will then be something they're enrolled in. But let's just uh, keep this simple. Now, yeah. there we go. So this is a simple state machine saying that it, it starts at some point, you know, a student applied to school. Um, uh, they're accepted. No, so they're not enrolled this year. Well, if they are accepted, then they're offered enrollment, um, and then they can choose to accept um, their, that, that offer. And if they say no, then they're not enrolled this year. And if they say yes, then they become enrolled. So this gives you an overview of the enrollment, of the enrollment uh, process, and it's a simple state machine. Now, in some cases, you might need to have multiple different choices. You might need to have multiple different ways that things can go. And in that case, you'll create what's called a fork. Um, they should be down here. Here it is. It's called a divider in here. So the idea of a uh, divider is that it's going to... Is that what they want us to use? Uh, we can just uh, create this as a as a wider line and then say that um, well accepted to school um, maybe this is uh, conditional somehow right I don't think this is the right um, line for it. Is there something called a fork in here? Yep, there it is, a fork node. So, um, so from here, we'll say that, well, the student applied and a number of different things might happen. This is terrible to work with. There we go. So they might be offered enrollment, they might be, might not be, and they might uh, be sent on to uh, something different, right? Um, conditional on on uh, on exams. 
So maybe they'll be enrolled if their exams go well. Maybe they'll just be offered enrollment. It's this one. And maybe they will not be enrolled. And then those are the three options. So that, that's a fork in, um, in a state machine. And those are the general things that you need to know. So you have your state, you have your beginning state and you have your end state. There might not be an end state. Then you have your states along the way that you want to do something with. And then you have your choices, which is uh, generally between few things, or you can have a fork where multiple different things might happen. Um, And sometimes when you make state machines, you might want to divide it into columns to say, well, this is the beginning state, or right now we are, we're at the beginning of the flow. Then when something has been accepted, we go through these steps and so on and so forth. So you can have columns like that in a state machine as well, but that's a little bit more complicated. So I hope you can see that there's a difference here, right? That when you're building a sequence diagram, you're, you're focusing on the sequence and all of the things that are happening. Whereas in the state machine, you're focusing on the state that you're in, which means that, I mean, when you look it up, it might look like a state machine is, is better at, at detail. But generally, I actually like to build state machines that are overarching and saying, well, what, what is the whole general flow that you go through to get through an application? And um, a state machine is built in a way that for each of the states that you have, you might dive into a state machine that lies under that. So you can always choose to go deeper. You know, more stuff might happen underneath the surface. So you'll try to keep each state machine at the same conceptual level. And then as you want more detail, you're going to create a state machine that expands on a single state in a higher level state machine. And then of course, do that wherever it's necessary. You don't want to get into the deepest um, level of, um, of complexity for every single part of your system. That would kind of de defeat the purpose, right? So we've gone from, if you followed along in these UML videos, we've gone from context diagram to just figuring out what the landscape is around our, our application into the um, components to figure out what components we're going to build, divided that into an entity relationship diagram or a data model. We've built a uh, class diagram, talked about analysis and design class diagrams. And then we've expanded on that with sequence diagrams and we've try to compare that now to state machines. So I hope this was useful. Feel free to take a look at my channel if you want to get into something a bit more programming centric now that you have a good handle on UML.